Infinidat, you have fairly recently brought some, what we can only call some pretty significant major innovations in the storage industry. You brought them out. So just be good to understand maybe the high level view of what it is, you know, the sort of why and the what, and then maybe we can drill down in a bit more detail to some of those specifics. Sure, absolutely, Philip. So as you know, our focus on the global Fortune 2000, right? Very large entities. Um, our solutions are high end. We don't do anything entry or mid range at this point just high-end solutions only. So we did a number of things. One was at the system level. Okay, so a brand new system, replacing our third generation with the G4, and then the rest are software. Okay, so we'll go over that real quickly. So first of all, the G4 is a brand new platform grounds up. So both our hybrid array and our all flash array have been completely refactored. So we have a new chip. We're actually switching to AMD from Intel. And the real benefits to the end users are up to two and a half times the performance on IOPS and bandwidth. So we, at the same time, also have reduced the power consumption on our controller infrastructure by 20%, obviously helping with a greener IT environment. Uh, we're able to get this, you know, over two, two and a half times performance uh, because we're switching A to a faster CPU cycle, okay, and also more cores. So there's more cores and a faster CPU platform. Also, we're using DDR5. And as you know, our controllers are active, active, active. All three are active. We're the only high-end vendor that even has that, uh, which is why we can give our 100% availability guarantee. And what we've done is inside of those controllers now, we're N, uh, NVMe um, to the flash that's inside of each of those controller infrastructure. So that's led to a new uh, performance level on the G4, all new hybrid, all new, all flash. Now, we've also figured a way to come up with a much smaller form factor, all flash. It still is active, active, active. Still has all our software functions, our InfiniSafe, for example, for cyber protection. It has our Infuse OS, our operating system, all of our data services, snapshot, replication, all that stuff but we figured out how to take a high-end array and shrink it into only 14 rack U. So instead of being a full rack, which we've done historically, we now have a high-end array that fits in only 14 uh, physical rack U, and there's a number of advantages for the end users. So uh, one, it's a great solution now, the new all flash, the smaller form factor for co-location. A lot of people like to do co-location. Even if they have a core data center, they do some co-location as well. So that fits better as you know, co-location. A lot of charges on the uh, physical footprint that you use in their data center, the power of the cooling. So now with 14 rack, you are much better for that uh, use case. The other is what I'll call an edge or distributed data center. So let's say I'm a global Fortune 500. I'm 80 billion euros, 80 billion dollars, 80 billion pounds. And I've got 29 factories, okay? So I've got a core data center, right? If I'm global, I've got one in Asia, probably one in the United States and one in Europe. That's very normal. But I also happen to have a small data center, if you will, a distributed or edge data center at every one of my 29 factories. These are tiny. They're not like your, those big core data centers in this example, they're small. So you just smaller form factor because they're gonna have one or two racks maximum inside of that small data center that's in every one of those factories. So by having that small form factor, now we're ideal for those edge and distributed data centers. And then lastly, core data center. I'm sure Phil, you've been inside or you walked and you go, boy, part of this data center is empty, right? You see the rack and it's only half full. Why are they not using it? So now with the 14 rack U configuration, if one of our customers has a big giant data center and some of the racks are only partially filled, as long as there's 14 rack U, they can stick it in there instead, instead of getting a, one of our bigger models. So, and lastly, it's reduced the price point. So when you look at our bigger models, we have 100% full, 80% full and 60% full. And those models all come in a rack, right? You get the rack from us. Um, when they're partially populated, the 1680, you can upgrade, right? Just call us up. Hey, we need some more storage. And the upgrade is fully non-disruptive, okay? So your application workloads keep running, okay? And in that 60% populated, we're sitting about 350 terabytes. But with the 14 rack, you, the new smaller form factor off flash, we're down at 155, 
which means we can drop the price even more. So there's a cost advantage, clearly a form factor advantage for those use cases where a big full array won't fit. So that's what we did on this on the system side, Phil, was the new G4 platform, which is available right now. We've already already shipped several of them, actually. Okay, and as I say, you have been busy because alongside that, I think there's um, developers within Finiverse, storage as a service, and you, you mentioned briefly Infinisafe. So perhaps you can yeah, talk sure. us through, through each of those in turn. That would be good. Well, obviously, cyber is the biggest thing. So let's start with that. As you know, well, cybersecurity analysts estimate the cost of cyber. So this is preventative as well as paying ransom, as well as picking up the pieces after the fact, um, is about a 9.5 trillion US dollar hit to enterprises this year in 2024. So as you know, we announced a couple of years ago our Infinisafe platform. And Infinisafe comes included with every array and our purpose-built back of appliance, the InfiniGuard, for free. We don't charge for Infinisafe. It's part of our Infuse OS operating system. So that gives you A, immutable snapshots, which by the way, we guarantee in writing they are indeed immutable, non-changing, non-deletable, we'll put that in writing. A air gap, you need to create a space between the data layer, right, and the management layer. We can do that locally. We can do that remotely, right? Data center one to data center two, or you could do both. So we support both as well. Um, a fence forensic environment. As we talked about last year, you and I did a, a webinar, of course, on um, cyber. And as we pointed out, it's not if you'll be attacked, it's when and how often. The average enterprise across the world is attacked 1,258 times every single week. So let's assume they're going to be successful one time. So you need to create a fenced environment. You've created these immutable snapshots, but remember the cyber mafia is not in there beating its chest like King Kong in one of those science fiction movies. They're quietly doing this, right? So you've got to get what in the industry is referred to as a known good copy. So you take your candidate, stick it in the fenced environment, okay? And once you know you've got a known good copy, you then do a, rest a restore, right? You restore um, back because you know this copy is clean. No malware, no ransomware, right? So on the Infinisafe side, we also guarantee the recovery time. We guarantee on primary storage, our Infinibox and our Infinibox SSA, recovery time of one minute or less, no matter how big the data set is. So as an example, every quarter we do a cyber webinar. In fact, we're doing a cyber webinar on June 20th of this month. But we did one last quarter. We recovered 175,000 files, over 200 terabytes of data in three seconds, Phil. We guarantee, if that had been two petabytes, four petabytes, we guarantee one minute or less in writing, in writing. Now on the purpose-built backup appliance on the backup side, and we support all the major backup vendors, right? Commvault, Veeam, Veritas. We will guarantee recovery of 20 minutes or less. And in the same webinar last quarter, <clears throat> we recovered 20 petabytes, 20 petabytes of a Commvault backup data repository in 13 minutes. In Q4, since we, as you know, we work with every backup guy. So in Q4, we did the same webinar. We recovered 20 petabytes of a Veeam backup repository in 11 minutes. And again, we guarantee 20 minutes or less. So what we added this year, two things. One, our cyber detection capability, which will scan using machine learning and AI looking for malware and ransomware, now works on VMware. So we had it for files, we had it for databases, we had it for volumes, but you could not scan anything at a VMware data store. And you know how ubiquitous VMware is. I mean, everyone's got it. So it had to be, if you will, um, you know, bare metal, right? So a database on the server, right? But now we announced support and it's available today uh, cyber detection, that same technology for VMware data stores. Okay. And then also for Infinisafe, we announced our automated cyber protection. And what this does is help you reduce the threat window and also elevate storage now into a central core of your cybersecurity strategy. So what we do is we can interface with the cybersecurity software companies. So IBM QRadar, Splunk, Exabeam, Fortinet, 
Microsoft Sentinel. So when any of them detect an attack, what we'll do is we'll automatically kick off an immutable, immutable snapshot. So now you're not talking the storage doing it. I mean, we're, we're executing the snapshot, but the storage isn't finding it. Your regular cybersecurity software, which all the global enterprises have bought something and sometimes more than one. So when they sense an attack, we can automatically kick off a snapshot. And if you want, you could even automatically scan it for malware or ransomware. So the reason we did that is, as you know, pe people do snapshotting, right? And they certainly don't snapshot every 10 minutes, right? And even though our snapshots have no performance penalty, it's just not what people do. So they do it either every four hours, every six hours, twice a day. So right now we're sitting here, nine o'clock California time, as you know, I'm in Silicon Valley. So I just finished my snap. What if at 9.15 California time, Microsoft Sentinel senses a threat. And let's say that you have configured to snapshot every 12 hours. Do you want to wait 11 hours and 45 minutes to do your another? No, you might as well take one now and start scanning. Because what if it's over in the other part of the data center and it's spreading, right? It hasn't hit you yet. So if you, if you don't take that snapshot, you've got a threat and you want to shrink that window. So you could take the snapshot immediately. So two things, A, they're using cybersecurity software. Why not let that cybersecurity software interface with the storage device and execute something to try to help, right? With that, with that window. So two things we added in the cybersecurity space with Infinisafe. Infinisafe cyber detection for VMware, expanding from bare metal now into virtualized environments. And also now, automated cyber protection, which integrates with their cybersecurity software packages. So it's really elevate storage now as to part of the, yeah, if you think about it, this, the chief security officer, the CIO, none of them are storage guys. So when they're thinking security, you're thinking, we got to scan the apps, right? We got to scan the servers, maybe the networking, right? Cisco and the networking, they've had, you know, security scanning for a couple of years now. But on the storage side, even though we've had it for two years and some of the other people have had it for a couple of years, they don't think storage is important yet. Think about it. If I'm a global Fortune 2000, what percentage of my most valuable mission critical and business critical data do you think is sitting on my enterprise storage? 90%. <laughs> so if you're going to do all this other scanning, why not take advantage of it? And so now storage can be part of that overall solution instead of sitting off to the side waiting for an attack to happen now this cybersecurity software which they usually all have them it automatically kicks it off for you so that's a great thing on the infiniverse side since you mentioned as you know infiniverse is all about gathering telemetry data information on the snapshots information on replication information on performance and capacity so what we're doing is we're turning that into an infrastructure consumption program pro platform and we're doing that to help reduce the headache of IT. So let's take an example. We are just talking about snapshots. Let's say that you want to look at 20 different InfiniBoxes. So we can do snapshots at the volume level, the run level. There's all kinds of ways. Some are read-write, some are immutable, right? There's all kinds of different ways to use the snapshots. Right now, you need to go into InfiniVerse. You need to launch the software. It tracks all this. It's got great dashboard. What if we would just send you a report once a week? or once a month saying, here's all the snaps you took. Here's what's read, right? Here's what's immutable. By the way, on this array, you added two more snapshots with the following schedule. So the IT is to make IT simpler and easier. And as I know, cause you guys wrote about it, the IT skills gap is universal. I don't care where you're in Japan, in the US, anywhere in Europe, the UK, Germany, every place is talking about the IT skills gap. So all this automation makes it easier to manage the storage. Now we're known for having easy to manage storage already. We have a number of public references, both our own and the Gartner Peer Insights, which are end users, saying that they haven't touched their InfiniBox for two or three years. That's right, they don't. But if they want information on capacity or performance, they launch InfiniVerse. They don't have to play with the box. They're just getting the information. So now we'll make it allow that information. And for things that we do as a service, for example, our cyber detection and storage software as a service, right? Our InfusOS Cloud Edition, 
which now, by the way, is also available for Microsoft. That's new. That we in, we're available with AWS now for Microsoft. But that also is storage as a service. With the Infiniverse, as we uh, mature the platform, you'll be able to place your order for additional capacity without having to call us up. You can do it right there. We'll invoice you, right? You auto-generate a PO back. And that simplifies the IT process because there is such a giant skills gap. Okay, so if I'm if I'm understood you correctly, that you, your main focus seems to be developing sort of cyber resilient storage capabilities and infrastructure services. Um, and as part of that, is it right to say that we can no longer? I think we probably ch touched on it before, but we can't view storage and um, security as sort of separate silos. They do need to be uh, fairly closely integrated. Yeah, we right? uh, we absolutely think that that's the wave of the future. Um, when you think of the data sets, remember we're high end enterprise. We don't sell to Herzog's Barn Grill or Phil's Cigar Store. That's not our customer. Unless Phil's Cigar Store is a fifty billion U.S. dollars chain of cigar stores, yes, then you're a customer, of course. But you know, so we're only selling to the big guys. They get attacked over twelve hundred times a week. And if I'm the cyber mafia, I'm going to go after the backup copies, the archive copies, and the active storage. Because if I just look at the active storage, Phil, you call up your CIO and you say, CIO, do we have backup copies? Okay, restore that. Or you, if you're the CIO, you call your backup team, right? But if I'm the cyber criminal, I'm going to make sure I've got all of this stuff locked up for you. So when you look at the global Fortune 2000 with 90% of their data sitting on their enterprise storage, why would you leave storage out of the equation? So A, we've dealt the InfiniSafe technology, InfiniSafe cyber detection, and InfiniSafe automated cyber protection. So that's on our side. But now, especially with cyber protection, automated cyber protection, the capability of interfacing to a broader cybersecurity strategy and a broader cybersecurity solution. So it is a, a critical component. Yes, we're faster. Yes, we have 100% availability. But we've had that for years. So this is, if you will, the new frontier, Phil, where you're the cyber criminals are going after everything. They go after the servers, they go after the network, they go after the storage, they go after the apps, they go after everything. And the storage guys, quite honestly, have been lagging and have not been doing as much as this, as the other people have. And then of course, you've got the cybersecurity companies, right? IBM's got a division that's cybersecurity, RSA, you know, Splunk, Microsoft now with Sentinel. So people are gonna buy those packages. So why not take advantage of that and make sure that the storage can be tipped off when there's a threat coming, not by its own software to detect, but interface with something they've already bought or are getting ready to buy from a cyber site. So that is a critical, critical component. And then of course, we're always about ease of use. So Infiniverse, InfuseOS Cloud Edition, right, which allows it to seamlessly move data back and forth to AWS last year and now to Microsoft Azure. So that's about ease of use. And of course, that ease of use translates into controlling costs right? Enterprise storage is not low cost. However, you can get it lower. You can consolidate. We do that as well. One customer, 450 floor tiles with a competitor, 100 floor tiles with us. Now that's a giant global fortune 100, but 100 floor tiles is way less expensive than 450. The power, the cooling, the operational resources just to keep it up and running. And on top of that, they happen to save 61 million US dollars in capital expenditure because they were going to replace the whole 450. Instead, they only had to do it with 100. So it saved them $61 million right up on the first PO, Phil, by doing it that way. But then there's the ongoing cost power and cooling for 450 floor tiles, full rack, by the way, Phil, not partial. So think how much that is. I don't care where you are in the world, it's, it's ungodly expensive. So we want to control all of that. So by making it easy to use with Infiniverse. Uh, clearly what we've done with the new platform, which is more power efficient by 20%. And again, because it's faster, up to 2.5X faster, that also means instead of putting 450 floor tiles to 100, which of course is our third generation, maybe with the fourth generation, that would have been 75 floor tiles, which would have saved them even more money. So we're clearly about not only the traditional, let's make it fast, let's make it 100% available. That's all, to me, that's kind of, so remember, I'm almost 70, Phil. I've been doing this for a long, long time. So everyone's been doing that. 
every generation is faster. Every generation, you make it more available, right? It used to be two nines, then three nines, then four nines, then five nines. We're at 100% availability and we guarantee that in writing. So those are kind of what I'll say a checkbox item. When you buy a car, do you get a radio? Of course. When you buy a car, do you get four tires? Of course. So to me, those are check boxes. And do the tires get better every couple of years, right? The radio gets better. That's normal. And we've done that with the G4. But on the software side, things like the Infiniverse, things like what we're doing with Infinisafe, that's where the innovation is in the, in the enterprise storage world. And we're you know making sure we're a leader in that. And I'm just wondering, I mean, it's fairly early days from the launches, but in terms of feedback, I guess the analysts have, had things to say, maybe some of your channel partners and, and crucially, I mean, you gave a great example there, but your, your end user customers, what, what they, you know, what, what are all those sort of different folks sure. um, telling you so far? So, well, first of all, the launch has been uh, wildly successful between the coverage and the press. Uh, clearly the analysts have been very positive. And one thing interesting, Phil, when we did this launch, we actually briefed 15 analysts that are security analysts. Their job is not storage. So yes, we briefed the normal 80 analysts all over the world that matter, the Gartner, the IDC, the four, of course we briefed all those, the ESG, the Futurum group, you name it, we briefed them, right? But we reached out and started briefing cybersecurity analysts who don't know anything about storage and educating them on how we interface with the people they do cover, IBM storage or security division, what they do with Microsoft, what they're doing with Fortinet, what they're doing with all this you know, the security guys. So we made sure we briefed. So that's been very positive. Channel has been incredibly receptive. In fact, there's been several articles in the channel, Microscope in the UK, CRN in the US, the channel news, all have written articles about what we're doing and how that benefits the reseller community. But you're right. Most importantly has been the end users. So it has been, so first of all, as you know, all the vendors show their big enterprise customers under non-disclosure, your roadmap. So they, they all knew it was coming in this quarter. But normally the conversion cycle in the high end tends to be slow. So it's like, all right, we'll buy one. And we'll but you already have our third gen. I know, but we'll buy one G4. We'll buy a couple more G of the third gen. And you know what? After we play with it for six months, we'll buy more. Well, that has not been the reaction this time. It has been buy, buy, buy. So, you know, when we look at our forecast, of what we thought it was going to be, we ended up, and in this this quarter, we ended up being over half of what we thought G four, and we thought it was going to be like twenty five percent. So that is a strong vote of confidence from the end user community. Um, we do have of uh, several that are installed already. Uh, so as you know, we're very strong in the banking sector. There's five or six banks that have already installed their G fours. Um, got some healthcare companies that have bought some G four already. Um, that we've installed. Um, so it's looking good. And the feedback from all the early installs and pub went right in, worked flawlessly. Obviously, almost everybody now is doing InfiniSafe, right? Cyber, they're all paranoid. And rightly so. I mean, you probably saw, um, although they're global, they're based in the US, the U United Healthcare Group. Um, as you know, now in the United States, if you're publicly traded, including foreign companies that have entities that they trade publicly in the United States, if you have a cyber attack, you have to file with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. So as United Health Group did, and in that filing, the cost of the cyber attack, 1.8 billion US dollars. That's just one company. So the EU has regulations everywhere, the DORA regulation, uh, both the US and the EU have a cybersecurity architecture document. They're separate, but when you read them, they read almost identical. So they clearly are, you know, talking to each other about what is needed. You have, of course, the NIST framework for cybersecurity, which is being expanded this year. So we make sure we're reading all those things. We interface with those people ahead of time where we can, so we can be on the forefront of that of that cybersecurity. And it's just gonna get worse. It's not gonna get better. In fact, I just saw an article in the US cyber press that cyber attacks in North America for Q1, we're up 32% from last year. And those are ones of the report. Remember, Phil, a lot of people won't report it. The other thing they noted was that, as you know, you can get insurance. 
right? So and to, it, part of your company insurance plan, you can get cyber attack insurance, okay? Just as you can get theft insurance, right? If you have a factory and someone breaks into your factory and steals the cars or steals the tires or steals whatever you're building, there's insurance for that. Well, guess what? There's cyber, cyber insurance as well. Cyber insurance claims are also up in North America. I'd be shocked if they're not up in Europe as well. So it's, it's a big deal. So making sure that storage not only has the regular checkbox, are we up to 2.6x faster this generation? Yes. Did we make it lower cost? Of course. Do we make sure we kept the availability at 100%? Absolutely. But those to me are, you know, you got to have the tires, right? You got to have the steering wheel. You got to have the radio. And we made those all better. But the unique thing is now our car is solar powered or our car runs on hydrogen or our car actually can fly now. So it's not just a regular car. Like uh, remember that old cartoon years and years ago, the Jetsons, where everybody instead drive their car is, a, is like a little spaceship, but it looks like a car, right? So that's what we're doing. And cyber is the vehicle that you need to do that for now. Um, and it doesn't look like it's getting any better. It looks like it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And as you know, AI makes cyber even harder to detect. While the company's on the good side, we try to use AI for all kinds of things, right? The LLM, right? All the stuff you're trying to do with, with AI. If you don't think the cyber criminals are doing the same thing, remember, these are not the stereotypical movie criminals with, you know, they're not very smart and, you know, they're just try to beat people up. That cyber criminals are like geniuses. They are basically the guys that should be working at Apple or Microsoft or Infinidat or SAP. That's what they, but they're not. For some reason, they became a criminal, but they are technical geniuses, right? How, you know, $9.5 trillion is an incredible amount of, of money. And by the way, that includes everything the companies need to do to try to protect themselves. So I, it, it's getting worse. And when you talk to the cybersecurity analyst, the forecast, while $9.5 trillion, this year, next year, they're talking close to 11 trillion. So they don't think it's slowing down. And I know every government is trying to do something about it. Pretty tough. So we're making sure that our storage is part of the corporation's cybersecurity strategy to try to you know, thwart these guys. And by the way, you're going to get attacked and they're going to get in. So when you get in, do you want recovery in a minute or 20 minutes? Yes. <laughs> do you want to make sure that immutable snap was not compromised? Uh, yes. And so there's a bunch of things storage guys can do, which we're doing now. And then integrating with the other cybersecurity packages is obviously really takes you up that level. Now you're part of the corporate strategy because you're interfacing with the software that they, they're going to buy anyway from a, a cybersecurity vendor. Yeah. I was, I was going to come on to ask in terms of the launches you, you, you've talked, talked about, um, how does that sort of, affect your your status if you like within the storage industry um you know in the landscape what is it just sort of confirmed your position or has it moved you to a different sort of level or a different place whether it's on the you know one of these Gartner magic quadrants or just yeah. more generally you know how how are you do you think you're being seen now so when you look at it from the platform perspective with the g4 it solidifies what we've already done okay we've been a leader in the Gartner magic quadrant for six years in the Gartner Peer Insights, which is actually end user reviews, it's not Gartner analysts, it's end users, we've been the customer's choice six times. So that's all great, but that's kind of based on what we've been doing, Phil. And now between the cyber angle and what we're doing with Infiniverse to get this IT automation to the next level. So remember, the IT skills gap ain't going away. It's going to get worse, right? So the more automate you can be with what we're doing with Infiniverse, and then clearly hybrid cloud is, is here. Right. So we got the cyber moving it up a notch. So that's pushed us up. The seamless hybrid cloud, you know, hybrid multi cloud integration. That's, it's almost becoming a checkbox, Phil. People, are, they may not use it, but it's like, do you have it? Of course we have it. Right. Remember, when you buy a car, you don't get every feature, but you might ask, and everyone may ask, do you have the more powerful engine? You may not buy it, but you know, they've got it and they sell a few. Right. So, we're making sure we've got that seamless hybrid cloud. And then clearly cyber is, is huge. So we're making sure that all that software we're adding continues to enhance our software value. And the feedback, again, when you take a look at what the analysts have been saying about us, has pushed us up a notch. You know, and we already were high.
but now it's taking it to that next level. And we, we see that in important. Remember, we're the small guy competing against the gorillas, right? We're the only small enterprise storage company out there. Everybody else is billions and billions of dollars, right? IBM, they're publicly traded, Dell, HPE. That's who we compete with. So we've got to be agile. We have to be nimble. And the key thing is delivering both technical value, which is critical, right, to the storage guys, but business value. And we've been doing that, you know, with our latency, for example, as we've talked about in the past, you know, an SAP workload that took four hours on another platform when it comes to ours, and I'm talking our third gen, not even the new one, that takes 30 minutes. Well, that means a lot to the CIO. Remember, I, I, I don't know about you, but I've, in all my years of doing this, I'm probably close to talking to a thousand CIOs, not always at the biggest companies, but most of the time in the fortune. Um, I can't remember one who ever used to be a storage guy. So they know they need it and they know it costs a lot of money, but they don't know about it. So you've got to deliver not only that technical value for the storage administration, the storage manager, but business value. Can you help me with ROI? Can you help me with my total cost of ownership? Can you help me with cyber? It's all over the data center. What's your contribution to my cyber strategy? I got an IT skills gap. I got to hire some of them admins. Now they have four. Talk about filling, helping fill that. By the way, all those other 11 guys, they're all still working there. They just don't do storage now. <laughs> they're doing something else. So that IT skills gap is, is a critical thing. So our focus is not just the technical say, ooh, to the CI, the CFO now talking to the CIO. You saved me $61 million. I'm going to tell the CEO to give you a bonus. $61 million is a lot of money. Um, and that was, by the way, just on the CapEx at that account. So we're, that is the business value side that Infinidad has really excelled at. And we need to keep doing that because the big guys, it's not like they don't do anything. I came from two of the biggest storage companies in the world. You know, as the CMO of the IBM storage division, as well as the VP of channels. And I was the senior VP um, for product management, product marketing, at EMC. So I know that, you know, they see us, they say, wait, we should do that too. And they will do it. They've got, you know, legions of engineers compared to us. So for us, it's about enhancing that technical value, but very much making sure that technical value delivers business value. And that's the, what has helped separate us, Phil, over the years. And particularly in the last couple of years, we've really, really accelerated that work because the big guys, you know, in, in their mind, we're an irritant. We're a leader in the magic quadrant. Do you, do you think they want to, it's one thing to see the other big guys. It's this little tiny company, wait, what are they doing? So, you know, they're, they're certainly going to try to stomp us out. Thank God we've done a great job of avoiding it. As you've seen, we've publicly discussed our growth the last couple of years. Been great. But that doesn't mean they're not having worked at two of those big guys. When they see the little guy who's growing, it's like, we got to get those guys. So for us, we continue to advance the G4, what we've done with the Infiniverse. Clearly, all the cyber stuff is incredible. The cyber detection on VMware, you know, first one to do that. Uh, the automated cyber protection integrating with cybersecurity packages, same thing, the first guy to do that. Um, we even have now a controller upgrade program fill for the G4. So in the mid spaces, you know, where you can get a controller upgrade ahead of time and say, okay, when the next one comes, I want a controller upgrade. You keep the media, but you swap the controllers out, but the hard drives or the flash stay. We're doing that. We're the only guy doing it in the high end. Now it's common in the overall storage market at the entry and the mid-range, but in the high end, no one's doing it. And now we are. So, but that's delivering business value, right? It's not really, yeah, there's some technology behind it. Okay, how do you do that and keep the workloads running and non-disruptively? Because again, in the high end, it has to be non-disruptive. We're doing all that. But the point is, it's a business statement as well, right? We did the technology, but the business statement is, it will lower your costs because you, A, you won't have to migrate data, which is very, as you know, in the high end is very expensive, very time consuming. It take days and days and days. And while you're doing it, you know, you're slowing down the performance of the applications due to the migration. That's just kind of natural. Um, now you don't have to do, do the migration and you don't have to buy the storage, right? When you buy the full array, you're paying for the controllers, the racks, and the bulk of what you pay for is actually the storage media. You know, if you look and were to sort of parse out what it is, about, you know, 60% of the bill of materials, what it costs us or our competitors to build it, what, you know, when we have to buy stuff, it's about 60% is the media. 
only 40% is, is actually the other things that go into that giant rack. It's almost all the media, the hard drives or the flash or the hard drives and the flash, depending on how you've got your box configured. So when you do the controller upgrade program, you don't have to do that. You just have to get the controllers with the software. So that's, that's, but that's a busy, well, it took technology to make sure we can do that on the next generation. It's really a business statement. It's helping them save money at the OPEX side, you know, helping with the migration stuff and not have to do that. It helps on the business side. The check to us is going to be less for the controller upgrade than an entire box, right? And we'll do it either way. Because by the way, having worked at a company that had this several years ago, we found a lot of people said, well, wait, do you have bigger hard drives now or bigger flat? Well, of course we do. Say, so, you know what? There is no argument that doing the controller upgrade program is less expensive than buying a whole new array. So pe some people really want to go for that. And so now we've got that in the high end, delivering a unique value proposition for the high end market that exists in the other you know, lower end markets, but doesn't exist in the high end right now until, until this program. And in terms of uh, cyber protection, cyber resilience, do you, would you prefer to be known in that category or do you think there's a category there to be created or is it just too complicated to, in that way, bolt on sort of storage and uh, cybersecurity companies together in this thing? Or ju just your thoughts, I suppose, as to, to, to how that might be uh, developed? <laughs> so, as you know, I'm very prolific on social media, whether that be LinkedIn or threads or I can't call it X. I have to call it you know, Twitter. <laughs> Um, in fact, on, when I do a PowerPoint, uh, you know, the old, remember that old Twitter, Twitter logo, right? That bird thing. I still have that on my PowerPoints <laughs> and I'm not changing it until Elon Musk sues me. <laughs> Other than that, I'm staying with it. So you anyway, have 56 billion to sue you with soon, but no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I always refer to us as the leader in enterprise cyber storage. So you still have to have that storage moniker, right? The data is there. Uh, you get the cyber in. Obviously, we're high-end enterprise. I don't say high-end. I just say, you know, enterprise cyber storage leader is how I position us. Again, been <laughs> stuck in that traffic. Of course, I wasn't driving because I only drive on the proper side of the road, which is a big argument. By the way, I, I since I know a lot of your uh, viewers who see this in the UK, do you know why I wear a wine shirt all the time when I talk to people in the UK? No. Because the obviously Hawaii was settled by the Polynesians, but of course, when the more older, you know, the more aggressive civilizations came around, um, it actually was owned by the UK first before it was U.S. property. So, and in fact, when you look at all in the United States, all the states have a state flag. When you look at the Hawaiian state flag, there's a Union Jack in it in the corner. So it has the red, white, and blue, which the U.S. and the U.K. both have, right? So we both have the same colors of the flag, but they not only have red, white, and blue, but then they have a Union Jack in their flag. So they are clearly paying respects to the U.K. for 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 being in charge of them for uh, oh, wow. a couple hundred years back from back in the day. So I always wear the Hawaiian shirts when I'm in the U.K. Uh, and no, I've only had one person ever in all my years wearing them in the UK. Only one person at yeah, a web, at a seminar or a trade show ever said, oh yeah, we used to we used to own Hawaii before the before it became part of the US. Only one person's ever got that right. So <laughs> and I'm um, just um, sort of in near near finishing, it'd just be good to understand I, I, it's probably a bit greedy to ask because we've obviously just talked about a lot of things you've been doing to to address customer pain points. But in terms of the roadmap, are there other things that you're you're looking to as um, you, you referenced the the uh, buzz word of the time AI. I mean, does AI put different demands on storage, or just need you need even more storage, or does you know does it make things more complicated? Just yeah. just your thoughts, I guess, as to what else might be uh, on the horizon for yourself. So a couple of things: we leverage machine learning and AI inside of the storage already, and then with what we're doing with Infiniverse, we'll do even more, right? But we already do that. InfiniSafe Cyber Detection uses AI and ML to learn about new malware and ransomware because it's constantly evolving, right? Um, so we're doing that inside. From an application workload use case, what do you need from storage? So the, the thing you need most of, of anything is bandwidth. And with the new G4, we are two and a half times faster on bandwidth. So whether you're using um, 
the large language model, the LLM, the small language model, because some people use that SLM. So that's on, if you will, on the, what I'll call the ingestion side, right? You're pulling the data in so you can learn about it and then you're evaluating it. And that's very bandwidth intensive with the G4 went out twice as fast, more than twice as fast from that perspective. Then also on the inferencing side, so this is where it's learning, where it's actually taking the data and making a decision just the way we do, right? And hopefully it won't be Skynet. <laughs> I have to, I just saw the Terminator last night, by the way, the original Terminator was on. I watched it and I'm thinking, wait, AI is Skynet. Okay, but let's assume it's not and it can all be used for good, not for bad. Um, when you're in the inferencing side, it is also about bandwidth. So because the G4 has both of these, and then also when you're not thinking, don't think um, file data now, Phil. So let's say I'm going to be doing AI, uh, some economic analysis AI. Well, that's going to be the Oracle database, right? The SAP database. It's going to be my accounts payable, my accounts receivable, my inventory management. It's going to be all my financial stuff. That's all going to come out of databases. And of course, at 35 mics of latency, which is most important high transactional databases, that will help you when you're doing it on the block side. So for the file side, it's all about the bandwidth. So when you're doing SLM or LLM, and then on the inferencing side, when you're doing it with things like databases, particularly things like financial data, um, if you are going to be, let's assume I'm a giant manufacturer and I'm shipping all over the world, okay? And I've got multiple factories all over the world. So the supply chain stuff is actually all sitting in databases. How many screws did I use? How many nuts? How many bolts? How many nails? How many this? How many that? And that, if you're going to use AI for that, that's going to actually come out of databases. So the faster the database performance, in our case, because of our incredible low latency, nobody's close to us on the latency side. When you're doing uh, and both learning and inferencing, and it's coming out of a database, which is not always going to happen. But there you're looking at how fast can you make the database and we can make it incredibly fast. So that's that's a big value from an AI perspective. So on the, you know, on the non-database side, the file side, if you will, for LLM and SLM, okay, as you're doing the learning, you need better bandwidth. We've got that. And then on the inferencing side, as you're now looking at the data the way we would think, I've got, I've read all these books, now I have to make a decision right? I'm looking at all these things. I have to decide what I'm going to buy. Right? I'm thinking now in a business sense, not, not at the end user sense. Um, so those things are all held by the bandwidth, right? It's how, how much stuff can you move in and out? Think of it as moving things in and out of your brain, the learning to get it in. And then the inferencing is you getting out and how fast can you make those decisions? And that's bandwidth. What's the bandwidth of your brain? So now think of it as again, artificial. So it is the bandwidth. And we've now with the G4, um, 2.6x faster on the bandwidth side. So that's good for AI workloads. And then obviously we've already had AI built in for things like the cyber detection and our autonomous automation. That That's kind of built into the storage. But again, you're thinking more about the the use case. That if I, and I'm sitting at the, the business, what's the application? It's nice that Infinidat uses some AI machine learning in their storage. Okay, that's great. But I've got to do AI on this. I And, you know, for these, for my business workloads, not to have the storage touch it. You know what I mean? Or I should say not about the storage itself because the storage will clearly touch it. So bandwidth is what you need to look at, Phil. That, that's what you need to look at. And with the G4, we're two and a half times faster. Um, the other future thing is clearly still going to be cyber, cyber, cyber. Um, it's going to get worse before it ever gets better. That's And it is literally a, a constant leapfrog, right? The bad guys are ahead, then the good guys are ahead. The bad guys are, and that's why when you look at the EU architectural document on cyber and the United States, they clearly, and they're, they, they're both getting refreshed. They're only like a year and a half old. They're getting refreshed already. And you know why? Because the cyber attack vector has gotten so much more specific in, in just 18 months as they're both due out um, at the end of the summer. So I think that that's why, um, you know, not just AI, but cyber is definitely not going to go away at this juncture. It doesn't look like, look, like it's going to be a long, long haul there to get that under control. And maybe just 
finally for um for the end user i mean most uh, if not all are on this digital transformation journey that's potentially taking them i suspect a bit longer and is a bit more complicated than they might have thought you know in the early days um and storage is clearly a critical part of that so just one or two thoughts for them uh, as they try and you know get their infrastructure to be digitally um ready or you know digitally enabled um yeah just a couple of thoughts to share maybe as to what to look out for when they're looking to change upgrade their their storage infrastructure in particular but i think the key thing on the digital transformation size is a tends to be size the more you digitize the more you need right and you've seen like the idc thing on how many zettabytes every year every year it's getting huger so you've got to have storage that can handle that that means the performance parameters are important too, because the more storage you have, the more data I should have that's sitting on that storage. You're trying to move it in and out of the server infrastructure and the other infrastructure. So certain workloads are, you know, clearly highly transactional databases. Now the database is five times as big. So the latency is, you know, the lower the latency, the faster it's going to take, slower it's going to take you to get to that data sitting in the database. Uh, same thing with bandwidth and IOPS. The other thing is if you go, the more digital you go, the more important things like 100% availability and constant uptime are. Because in the old days, you could pull out your piece of paper. Now you can't pull out your piece of paper. So even if it was on the computer and some of it was paperized, you could pull out the paper. When you, the more you do the digital transformation, there is no paper to pull out anymore. So if you don't have 100% availability, the other thing is you need to be free from attack. So the data protection side, you better have it backed up. You better have it replicated, right? If you have a fire in the data center, which by the way, so the most common form of data loss is still us humans. We lose more data than anybody, right? But after that, fire is an issue. Obviously with what you see going on in the environment these days and these dramatic changes, you know, more tornadoes here in the US, more hurricanes, more tsunamis, more flooding, all that stuff means the data is vul vulnerable because sitting in that data center. So if a giant flood comes through the middle of London, there goes the data center, right? So you've got to make sure the replication capability, what you're doing from disaster recovery and business continuity. The other thing, and this ties back to cyber, the more things that go digital, the more things I can steal if I'm the cyber mafia. The more stuff you do digital. So security is critical, data protection. Okay, you better back that thing up and then you better make sure you replicate it case there is some sort of disaster because there is no piece of paper anymore to go back to it doesn't exist so the digital transformation heightens the need for performance heightens the need for capacity clearly heightens the need for availability if you're not 100 percent again you can't pull something out if it's an emergency you got to get to something the storage better be there right uh clearly the data protection side so regular backup Disaster recovery and business continuity because, you know, if the data center is down, again, there's no piece of paper to go back to or find somewhere. And then clearly cyber, because the more elements that become digital from the business side, the more things that makes the cyber criminal go say, ah, I need to go after that. I can go after that. So those are things that kind of tie uh, what you need to do with digital transformation. It basically makes everything that you're kind of already doing with storage, cyber obviously being newer, but all the other stuff you were doing, right? Most smart companies were replicating from the UK to Germany or replicating from their data center in California, which is probably not the smartest thing to have because we really do have earthquakes. And you don't replicate to Japan because they have earthquakes too. They have earthquakes in Australia, right? So the whole you know infamous Pacific ring of fire. So you better be replicating somewhere else. And in other parts of the world, they have floods and tsunami. So you need that. And people have been doing that. But when everything is digital, there's no fire safe with a bunch of documents in it. There's no waterproof box. So there was a flood or a hurricane or tsunami, right? All the water damage. Oh, you just get out the waterproof box. Well, those don't exist anymore when it's digital. So that's why the digital transformation has heightened everything storage already does. And then obviously cyber with all the cyber taxes made everything just that much more important. And if it's all digital, that's just more it's more of an attack surface to go after. There's more things to steal and they will try to steal them. Okay, I mean, we have covered a lot of ground and you've, as ever, Eric, given us some brilliant insights into what's going on 
both at Infinidat, but it, obviously in the industry more generally and, and provided plenty of food for thought and hopefully some optimistic sort of things out there as well for people to look to do within their own organisations. But um, at least for now, I really appreciate the time you've given us. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you. Always love enjoying uh, being on the sessions with you. If there's anything you need, please let us know. Will do. And thanks again.